Hey, good afternoon, chemistry team. Your chemistry coach is coming back at you again. We're so close to being done with thermodynamics. Oh, it's so exciting. And then we're going to get into some weirder stuff with electrochemistry after that. All right. So in the last video, we were able to calculate the equilibrium constant for any reaction at any temperature using that nasty, nasty four-step process. Okay. So let's look at it. It's like a same coin, just, you know, heads and tails. You can use either that option, one that we did before with that long, long problem, or we're going to do option number two, use the Van Hoff equation. But what I want to do, instead of just writing on the board, I want to derive where this comes from so you can see that it really is exactly what we just did, just smushed into fewer steps, supposedly so. All right. Now, what we're going to do is look at it uh, if you've had me, you know we love graphs. We love being in science lab, looking at two uh, two variables uh, and how they depend on each other and, and trying to get them into a linear dependency. And then if they're linearly dependent, we can plot them and get a straight line, right? And the slopes and y-intercepts tell you a whole bunch of stuff from that. You get the y equals mx plus b. Oh, it's like, like, like finding a treasure chest full of gold. I got my y equals mx plus b. Woo-woo! Let's do this. We did it twice before with the clausius clapeyron equation way back when we looked at vapor pressures versus temperatures, and we did it with the Arrhenius equation. We took that Arrhenius equation and manipulated a little bit to look at rate constants versus temperatures. You had your K1, T1, K2, T2 for the clausius clapeyron equation, you had your P1, T1, P2, T2. Oh, yeah, it's coming back to bite us in the butt again. Yay! <laughs> so if you remember how I derived those things, see if you can do it with me. All right, I need a pen. Let's take those two equations we, just, we used in the prior video to get the equilibrium constant at some temperature other than room temperature. So we used, what was the first one? The one that had the equilibrium constant. So delta G naught was negative RT log of k, right? That was one of the Kinkahuna equations we used. That was in step four, I think, in the last video. And then in step three, we used delta G naught was delta H naught minus T delta S naught, right? Those were the two big equations we used. So in the prior video, we calculated delta H, H in step one, delta S in step two using the tables, because we couldn't use it to get delta G it's at a temperature other than 25. Plugged them in in step three to get delta G. Plugged it in here in step four to get K. All right, makes sense. But if A equals C and B equals C, doesn't A equal B? There's some term for that in math. I don't remember what it is. But anyway, therefore, there's my therefore symbol. Negative RT log K must equal delta H naught minus T delta S naught. You guys agree with me? Because they both equal delta G naught. Therefore, they must be equal to each other. <gasps> We've got ourselves a new equation. Let's play with it. Here we go. I'm going to divide through, and in the science, again, we're trying to get a y equals mx plus b format so we can make plots. I'm going to divide. Now, what are our variables here? Delta H naught, we're assuming, is constant over temperature. Delta S naught, we're assuming, is also independent of temperature. So the only variables we have, like R, obviously R is uh, constant, <clears throat> temperature, and the rate constant, rate constants, <laughs> that's kinetics, uh, the equilibrium constant. So we only got two things, equilibrium constant and temperature. We're looking for an equation that relates the how those respond to each other. So let's divide through by RT on both sides. So we're going to divide through by negative RT on both sides. So divide this by negative RT, which will cancel out and just give us log of K. Divide that by negative RT. Divide that by negative RT, and that cancels out that temperature term. So that will give us a fumbled blue pen. The pen is blue! Jim Carrey fans? Okay, anyway, here we go. Uh, so if I divide by negative RT there, I get log of K, log of the equilibrium constant. I'm going to divide that by negative RT, so it becomes negative. So that'll be negative delta H naught over RT. Good. I'm going to divide this by negative RT, so the negative cancels the negative. The temperature cancels the temperature, so I end up with delta S naught 
over R, right? Because the negative signs cancel and the temperatures cancel. So what, the reason I did that is I wanted to take that temperature and isolate it into one portion of the equation. See, it was in two different things over here. I didn't want that. So I want to isolate the temperature, which is one of the variables in just one component, and the equilibrium constant in one component. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a subtle manipulation. I'm out of room, so I've got to do it on another board. The delta H naught and the R are constant, correct? So I'm going to just factor out the negative delta H over R and multiply that by 1 over T so I can really isolate what the variable is. Let me write that on the other board, and then we'll see if you can figure out how that looks like Y equals MX plus B. And if you can, tell me what the slope is from that in terms of these parameters and what the Y intercept is in terms of those parameters. See how good you are, hotshot. Is this what you got? So I just factored out the constants. And it's the same thing. I just isolated the variable from the constant. So the log of the equilibrium constant is negative delta H naught over R times 1 over the temperature, the inverse Kelvin temperature, plus delta S naught over R. Let's look at what these mean. You ready? Y equals MX plus B, people. Y equals MX plus B. B. If you've had me, is this bringing back some bad memories? <laughs> Repressed psychological issues in your brain? <laughs> we have done this twice before. So let's associate things here. Obviously, Y, that variable would be the log of the equilibrium constant. X will be the inverse temperature. The slope will be the negative delta H naught over R. The Y-intercept will be delta S naught over R. So slope equals M is negative delta H naught over R. And then the Y-intercept, which is B, remember your math, will equal delta S naught over R. So if I plotted, if I did like in lab, did a whole bunch of different temperatures, and measured the equilibrium constants, however I did that, I could plot those. So I could take the log of the equilibrium constants, plot them on the y-axis, take the inverse of the Kelvin temperatures, plot them on the x-axis, because that's the independent variable on the x-axis, dependent variable. So the, rate, the, inter, the equilibrium constant depends on the temperature, right? So the dependent variable always goes on the y-axis. We will get a slope of negative delta H naught over R. So I can calculate the enthalpy change at standard conditions from the slope of this. <gasps> you know, just do a least squares fit on it. And then it, if knowing the Y-intercept from the least squares fit, I could calculate, well, I could, I could get the delta S, the, the entropy change at standard conditions. Hey, sweet. Let's draw a graph here, my friends. So if I did a plot of the log of the equilibrium constant, which would be unitless, versus the inverse temperature, which would have units of inverse Kelvin, that would give me a plot. So let's say I have, it intercepts there and goes like that. Let's say I get a graph that looks like that. That's my y-intercept. So let's follow. So the y-intercept would go right there. And if you right-click on any data point, if you're on Microsoft Excel, right-click on a data point there. You know, you can plot this in, in Microsoft Excel. And then do a right-click, insert equation. I mean, not insert, um, well, you do the chart first. Do a scatter chart. Click on the data. Go insert equation on chart. It does a least squares fit for you. It's pretty sweet. And then you'll get your slope, which would be negative delta H naught over R. And that will be your Y equals MX plus B. Right? Gives you that least squares fit, which is real slick. So if I wanted to calculate delta H, wouldn't that be fairly straightforward? So delta H naught would just be, move the negative sign over, negative your slope that you get from the least squares fit times R. Just move R over, move the negative over, you're good to go. You got delta H, same thing. Take your y-intercept, times it by R, you got your delta S. Shaka shaka, man. That's pretty cool. Now, if you recall from before, when we we're looking at uh, pre uh, vapor pressures versus temperature and rate constants versus temperature from the Arrhenius equation, we took this equation at two different temperatures. Mm -hmm. So we had like a T1 
we'll do a T1 and a K1 and a T2 and a K2. So we're going to take that at two different temperatures and subtract them from each other. Do some uh, algebraic manipulation and we'll end up with an equation at the end that has an equilibrium constant at one temperature, K1 and T1, an equilibrium constant at another temperature, K2 and T2. And that will be our Van't Hoff equation. You ready? Let's do some algebraic manipulation. I will be so proud of you if you could do that on your own. Try to derive the Van't Hoff, Van Hoff equation yourself before I do it. If you need, pause the video, look back in your notes from way back in the beginning of the semester when we derived, I derived the clausius clapeyron equation for you guys. I think we did that in lab. And then we did the same thing using the Arrhenius equation. We were in the kinetics chapter uh, to get the Arrhenius equation with the, the, the small k1, t1, small k2, t2. This is capital k1, t1, capital k2, t2. If you can do that, you can look in the mirror and pat yourself on the back and go, you rock, man, with your algebraic manipulation. Try it. You ready to give this a roll? This is like uh, whitewater rafting with major rapids. <laughs> Hang on for your life. Here's our equation, right? Log of the equilibrium constants, negative delta H over R times the inverse temperature plus delta S naught over R. Let's take that at two different temperatures, T1 and T2. So their K1 will be at T1 and K2 will be at T2. And let's subtract them. So let's take the final state, T2 and K2, and subtract the initial state, K1 and T1. So let's take this equation, you ready, at T1. So this would be K uh, at T2, right? We want T, T2 first. So let's take a log of K2, subtract the other one at, at K1, minus log of K1, right? So log of K2 minus log of K1 will be this term at T2 minus this term at T1. You might have to play this video a few times. So let's take this. This will be negative delta H naught over R, 1 over T2, plus delta naught S naught over R minus that same term, but with a T1, final state minus initial state. So this will be negative delta H naught over R times 1 over T1, our initial state, plus delta S naught over R. There we go. So it's a little trick you'll see quite often where you take some y equals mx plus b and then just subtract those equations at two different temperatures in this case. And we're going to see, I don't know if you can see, the delta S naught over R is going to end up canceling out in this process. So let's, let's show a few steps here. Let's bang through this. Remember uh, stupid log tricks number 342? Log of A minus log of B is log of A over B. Do you remember that? So this becomes log of K2 over K1. Hey, bring back, bring back some memories. Remember your log tricks, right? So log of A over B is log of A minus log of B. And if you multiply them, right, then we do an addition. All right, so that'll be equal to, so I'm going to factor this whole thing out. I'm going to multiply that negative sign through. So this will be negative delta H naught over R times 1 over T2 plus delta S naught over R. Didn't think you were going to be doing all this algebra today, did you? Ha, ha, ha. Minus the negative delta H naught over R times 1 over T1. Move the negative sign over so we get negative delta S naught over R. So I just multiplied the negative sign through. You could have gone plus here if you wanted to, but I did this for a reason. Does everybody agree with me? You ready? Bring out the red pen of death. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Delta S not over R. Adios, amigo. You're gone. Sayonara. See ya in another life. That's going to make this simplify this quite a bit, right? So the reason that we can do this instead of the other option you don't have to calculate delta S naught. Hey, that's kind of nice. So let's simplify this. So this would be log of K2 over K1, the equilibrium constant at temperature 2 over the equilibrium constant at temperature 1 will be equal to. Now, do you see the negative delta H over R in both those terms? That's a constant. I'm going to factor that out. So this would be negative delta H naught 
over R times one over the temper the final temperature minus one over the initial temperature. You see that? So that those terms, the y-intercepts, just go bye-bye. If you ever want to get rid of a y-intercept, great way to do this. I factor out negative delta H over R, and I get 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. This is what is called the Van Hoff equation. Van Hoff equation. So if you want to calculate the equilibrium constant at some temperature other than 25 degrees Celsius, you could use this as your second option instead of doing the four-step process we did before. The problem is you need some reference. You need a K1. You need an equilibrium constant at some initial temperature. So this is useful if you're provided a reference equilibrium constant. So I'll say useful if provided a reference K1 at T1. Commonly, that would be 25 degrees Celsius. Or 298.15 Kelvin. Not always. So I, my recommendation, if you're given, if I give you or the homework gives you a K value at some temperature and says, well, what's this K value at a different temperature? I'd use the Van Hoff equation because you already got K1 and T1. Just pop it in, avoid calculating delta S. If you're not given a reference equilibrium, uh, equilibrium constant, this would be a pain in the butt. I would go to the other one where you calculate delta H naught, calculate delta S naught, calculate delta G naught at that higher temperature, and then calculate K. It'd be easier to do. So only use this if you are provided a reference. Holy moly! Uh, totally up to you, not necessary. And uh, that that's most of thermodynamics. I'm pondering one more topic. We'll see how I feel after lunch. Keep cranking, guys. Never stop learning.